this week on Crossfeed. Silent Jesus. Jimmy Carter on women. Teachers, be careful what you teach. Consecrating cohabitation. And drug dealers for Jesus. Whoa! Hello, everyone, and welcome to Crossfeed Religious News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of Shepherd of the Ridge Lutheran Church in North Ridgeville, Ohio, near Cleveland. Wow, notice how he he says that so carefully. <laughs> He's still trying to remember where he is. I still have every time I answer the phone, I have to stop. Okay. You know. <laughs> Hey, and I'm Jim Butler, still pastor of St. Luke's Lutheran Church in Dedham, Massachusetts, right outside the 128 Beltway from Boston. Hello, everybody. Welcome back after a short week, since we were running a little late last week. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know what's so much better? Dale's dressing. You know, this? he gets this new call. He's got to impress people again. So, you know, I've noticed that he's got a collar and stuff. You know, gosh. I have Thursday night meetings here. Well, one anyway. So, yeah, once a month you may see me dressed like this. Because <laughs> literally we record this at 9 o'clock and I got home at 9 o'clock. <laughs> good, good. Well, at least you made it in. You should have made it in. Now you, now you know what I've been going through all these years. Yep. <laughs> and uh, But, uh, um, oh, we have to give a, a, a shout out to our president and his beer summit tonight, okay? So in honor of a beer summit, I'm drinking a Harpoon IPA. So, uh, you know, can, don't think I is it Lutherans are, are you know we we are taught to honor those elect and put in authority over us. <laughs> so I am doing my best to honor him. So, Mr. And, President, uh, here's to you. That's right. If I had had the op, see, and it's very fitting because you know, uh, uh, Gates and um, um, and 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 Sergeant Crowley, they're from Cambridge, just you know, over across the river. So they probably drink harpoon. It's a Boston brand, so uh, you know if he if I'd been there and they said, "What do you want?" Harpoon IPA, folks. It's the best you can get, really. <laughs> no, they don't sponsor us. <laughs> but if they want to send us money, we'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't have known that. But hey, if anybody in the Boston area you want Harpoon IPA in New England, great stuff. Um, hey, but speaking of of you know. This is now my home, uh, but I originally grew up, of course, in Kansas, just a little south there of Iowa, and out in the middle of the field. And speaking again, uh, and speaking of beer, what is beer? hops and barley? And what do they have in Kansas? Wheat. There's a good wheat beer too. Um, and there is a sign of Jesus holding a sheaf of wheat. We've now uh, lost uh, all of our Baptist viewers. <laughs> <laughs> We'll talk about the Baptists later. <laughs> so, uh, you know, um, but no, no words on it. Just Jesus holding up a sheaf of wheat. This wheat's for you or something like that, I guess. I don't know. It's, it's not hops. <laughs> yeah, but it's a wheat beer, you know. <laughs> Sam Adam makes great cherry wheat, but that's beside the point. So the, the, uh, the couple that arranged the billboard said that they want the drivers to take their own messages from the sign. So, I don't know, what message do you get from that? Hello out there, it's me, Steve, and this is Blue. <laughs> can you hear me? <laughs> you can. Hello? Wheat. <laughs> it's, you know, heavenly um, wheat. God gives us food. You know, this is, we're talking about um, thirty-four thousand dollars. They're saying is about the the cost of it. Um, to do something like this. I mean, well, you know. Yeah, but but I think they I I think they it's on their land. So uh, and and it's their own. It's kind of interesting. They said you know they contracted with an artist from Concordia. That's Concordia, Kansas. It's not a Concordia. Missouri, it's not a Concordia uh, school. It's a town in Kansas called Concordia. Uh, and the round, and, um, uh, 
there must be a word here, and round the pipe, and found the pipe in Oklahoma. That's it, and found the pipe in Oklahoma, uh, which, you know, I thought, the pipe? What are they talking about? But that's what they used to construct the billboard stuff out of. So it, it's a private billboard, obviously. So, so uh, yeah. I don't know. I I guess that's, the, I, I think that's the problem that we run into sometimes in churches is that uh, people sort of draw their own message from it and not a whole lot is said to, to really give them a solid message. You know, it's, I mean, isn't the whole point the message? I mean, when God created the world, he spoke it into existence. You know, Jesus is the word and, you know, you could argue that, well, yeah, he's the word. He speaks for himself. Um, but you know, it's, it's sort of, it's really, it's all about words. I, I think I'd rather have a, a message, especially given that we don't really know what he looked like anyway. Um, so I don't know. It just seems sort of odd. I mean, I guess it'll get people thinking, but where they go with that, who knows? Wheat. They'll think wheat. Heavenly wheat. Reminds me of those ocean spray commercials, the guy standing out in the, the cranberry bogs, you know? So that's like, oh, that kind of reminds me of that. Those cranberry bogs are down in southeast Massachusetts. I see. They really are down around Plymouth in that area. you got all kinds of cranberry bogs down there. So, and they make a very good cranberry beer, come to think of it, down there. <laughs> It really is. It's quite good. Really, beer with the flavor of cran- wheat beer with the flavor. It's a wheat beer even with a flavor of cranberries in it. It's quite you know, good that they put on there. It's wonderful, boy. You can make beer out of just about anything, can't you? Hey, I'm you know very got that got got that stuff down. I'll tell you, you know. So somebody's going to, you know, I, I guess you know I, tonight's episode must be titled Jim and Beer, you know. So. <laughs> President Obama, this beer is for you. Um, well, you know, since we've lost all our Baptist viewers anyway, uh, let's talk about them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you, 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 Jimmy Carter. Okay, first off, yeah, I couldn't understand why this is getting brought up again. Jimmy Carter supposed, okay, supposedly left the Southern Baptist Convention in the year 2000. Uh, the reality is, though, he hasn't left his church in Plains. He still attends the same church. <laughs> and the church is still as part of the Southern Baptist Convention. So, so I'm still trying to figure out what it is he's actually done. <laughs> he he um, left emotionally. Ah. You know, it's, it's sort of like these, um, like where you have someone in a loveless marriage and, and so their, their heart's not there anymore, but the, because they're honoring their marriage vows, they, they stay in the marriage. So they're, you know, my my heart left a long time ago, but I'm still here. That must be what it is. I'm guessing. Or maybe he transferred his membership somewhere else. No, but, he's still there. He's still in the same church. Well, he could have transferred his membership somewhere else and just keeps attending. I mean, people do that all the time. Well, okay, no. usually they they just start attending somewhere else and never get around to transferring their membership. But maybe he did the opposite. You're still here? It's over. But anyway, he's complaining um, about, he's calling for gender equality in the Baptist church um, and is uh, referring to, he says, the words of God do not justify cruelty to women. And I'm, you know, I'm trying to figure out what cruelty he's talking about. He says uh, it was... um, the church preached sexism using examples of Adam and Eve to fuel female subservience and prohibiting women from serving in the church. Really? I mean, I've known a lot of Baptists, and they do everything from lead the choir to teach Sunday school and and all kinds of stuff. As far as I knew, they serve in the church in all kinds of ways. In fact, if they're anything like the Lutheran Church of Missouri Synod, about the only thing they can't do is uh, be pastors. Okay, lady. So, I, I always, you know, anytime I hear that, well, don't allow them to serve in the church. Well, are you kidding? If it weren't for the women, nothing would ever get done. Right. Well, and, and the fact of the matter is, he's also not quite telling the truth. Because, um, 
you know, the key thing about being Baptist is soul determinacy. I can determine what the Bible says for myself. I don't need any creed, anything forcing me to say or believe anything. Now, with that understanding, individual churches within the Southern Baptist Convention do all kinds of things. And a lot of them have women pastors. Uh, when I was back in Springfield, the, the guy next to me, he was, they were duly affiliated. Southern Baptist Convention and Black Baptist Convention, I think. And, um, and I can't remember if they also had a woman pastor there, but I know, I know the guy who was there was, you know, very much in favor of women's ordination. And, uh, somebody, he said one time he was talking with a Southern Baptist guy, you know, another, another, you know, Southern Baptist meeting, and the, the guy said something like, you know, who, well, who said you can believe that? He said, no one did. I'm a Baptist. <laughs> You know, I mean, you know, you know, you know, I've got that right to believe whatever I want, um, and still be, you know, be part of this convention. So, there are Southern Baptist church. There's Southern Baptist churches that or baptize infants. There are Southern Baptist churches that uh, ordain women. I mean, it's so really to sit there and and, and talk about this, uh, which is something that he did ten years ago in the two thousand October of two thousand originally. Uh, it, it's just not true. So, you know, at the same time, even even taking sort of the, uh, you know, what he's intending to talk about here is the sort of party line, you know, and um, I'm talking about the, uh, well, he says, the truth is the male religious leaders have had and still have an option to interpret holy teachings either to exalt or subjugate women. They have, for their own selfish ends, over, overwhelmingly chosen the latter. And I, I'm i sorry, but I just, I don't see it. You know, I, I don't know the, the leadership, and, you know, I haven't followed them that closely. But what, what I'm seeing is they're just holding to the biblical understanding of the pastoral office. And, um, and he doesn't like it because it doesn't follow the culture. What struck me as interesting is in this he, in this article from CBS. Uh, now, obviously, this isn't his whole statement or anything, but at least in the article from CBS, he doesn't refer to any Bible passage. He, he does refer to the United Nations uh, Declaration of Human Rights. Uh, you know, sorry, but that's not our authority. <laughs> you know, the authority is that of Scripture. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, uh, uh, and, you know, while, um, while the denomination may be officially against the ordination of women, fact of the matter is the individual churches can do whatever the individual churches want to do. Yeah. So maybe that's why he's stuck around. I don't know. Maybe, maybe his church is, um, you know, sort of follows the United Nations instead of the Bible. And so then it's okay, and he can keep going there. Yeah, but the, but why he, you know, continues to, re, you know, say, I've separated from the Southern Baptist Convention, where he's still a member of a Southern Baptist church, I haven't figured out. Because uh, just like in our church, the, the, the congregation is the member of the body, not the individual member of the congregation. Yeah. So, you know, whatever he's going to do, I guess he's going to do. You know what I think he needs to do? He needs to go have a beer. <laughs> and make life much better for him. <laughs> do, do, do you have a transition? Or is it just everything's about beer tonight? Hey, I am honoring our president this night. And I am drinking a beer just as he's been drinking a beer tonight. So I am, I am, I am honoring higher authorities tonight. Okay. Well, <clears throat> speaking of drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like this story. <laughs> Drug dealing for Jesus, Mexico's evangelical narcos. <laughs> I love it. I, I love this one. Though. This, I, this is this is the evangelical version of the Godfather. <laughs> yeah. 
you know, I mean, can you, I, I can just see, uh, uh, um, uh, <coughs> Marlon Brando, Brando here with the Mexican accent, you know, pulling the stuff off. So. <laughs> um, right, we've got a, a, uh, uh, Servando Gomez, and I'll apologize if I, um, not being Spanish speaking, I may slaughter some of these names. Um, <clears throat> It's the head of a narcotics mafia that has baptized itself La Familia uh, Michoacana. I got a bad feeling about this. And yep. um, they bought ads in newspapers, uh, gave an interview to a leading Mexican magazine, and although they traffic drugs, they protect their local community and purport to be devout evangelical Christians. Yep. They <laughs> all... Family members are disciplined to abstain from narcotics themselves, so they don't use it. They just sell it so you can. And they study a special Bible authored by the gang's spiritual leader, Na Nazario Moreno, alias El Mas Loco, or the Maddest One. I have to agree with that one. Yeah. <laughs> There's someone in my um, head, but it's not me. So they've they've got their own music genre, drug ballads. Um, have their own fashion style, crocodile skin boots, uh, alongside designer bling, and um, revere an early twentieth century bandit, um, and I guess it would be pronounced Jesus Malverde um, as a narco saint. I thought they were evangelicals, not Catholics. I don't know. But anyhow, it says their, their scripture is, uh, mixes evangelical-style self-help with insurgent peasant slogans. Uh, I ask God for strength, and he gives me challenges that make me strong. I ask him for wisdom, he gives me problems to resolve. I ask him for prosperity, and he gives me a brain and muscles to work. Uh Moreno writes, using terms can be found in many Christian sermons preached from Mississippi to Brazil. And he's right about that, too. Ever listen to Joel Austin? It's right there. Uh, you know, except yeah. the fact that, really, Austin would be more like, God, market, park it, name it, claim it. You know, just, just tell God what you want. Yeah. You know, you say, know what this say. sounds like? We watched uh, the other night um, Evan Almighty. And, uh, and there was that line in there about, you know, if you... Uh, pray for uh, courage, then God's going to give you opportunities to be courageous or something like that. And, th you know, that's sort of, I mean, it, it's kind of on the right track. I mean, you know, I would say, if, if, um, and and I'm not the one that, that coined this, but if you pray for faith, what you're really praying for is suffering because that's how we grow in faith, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, the whole idea of saying, well, yeah, you know, we're devout Christians, <laughs> but we, you know, sell drugs and, you know, like, okay, just because you tell other people not to do it, I mean, that's sort of like saying, well, I run a brothel, but I'm a virgin. You know, that doesn't make it right. That sounds like a really cool idea. I never thought, thought of that one before. Thank you. That, that's a very good analogy there. Uh, they, but they do not tolerate brothel. robbery, <laughs> kidnapping, or drug dealing in their own communities. But they do reserve the right to use righteous violence. I like that. Righteous violence against anyone who betrays or crosses them. Those who commit mistakes are tied up for a long time. If the mistake is grave, they are tortured. If there is a loss of trust or treachery, they must die. A cartel spokesman called El Tio, the uncle, said in an interview. You killed my father. Prepare to die. The spokesman gave the interview sipping tequila in a restaurant with three armed bodyguards at the next table. See, I drink beer. They have tequila. tequila. <laughs> oh, that's the difference. See, I was trying to figure out what's the difference between Jim and these people. <laughs> that's uh, right. He drinks I beer. Drink beer. <laughs> they drink tequila. <laughs> they have armed guards. I have two. I have a pit bull in a lab. You know, that's the <laughs> and military trained kids. I mean, three three kids, military training, right? <laughs> so. 
but they, they they don't want any bloody mayhem. They they just want they want peace and tranquility within in the nation. And lots of money so. um, made by selling drugs. Yeah. Although it's kind of interesting, they they have the, the, this form on the internet about them, and you know, evil will only reign will only reign until Jesus stops it. Uh, writes when it causes the messenger. Nobody is saved from divine justice, and they cannot imagine the pain and suffering they will go through. I, I wonder if these guys are reading this, because, and all honestly, God doesn't like to be mocked, and if you claim to be His follower, and yet. You know, uh, uh, are are a bunch of drug dealers, and uh, you know, have uh, drug wars and stuff. Uh, God is not going to look real pleasantly on that. No, no, it's I mean, this, God's job to judge, not ours. But you know, this is the type of thing. I mean, because we're sitting here laughing at this, where you know, it reminds me of this passage. It's in the New Testament. And Paul's quoting the Old, and I can't remember where it is. But, you know, God says, my name is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. Yeah. You know, how many people looking at this are laughing? You know, the idea that, yeah, you know, Christian narco dealers, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, this whole, um, you know, Jesus said the, you know, the two greatest commandments. Number one, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself, right? Right. Um, hello, selling drugs, getting other people addicted to drugs, and then benefiting from that. That's not loving your neighbor as yourself. Or loving your neighbor as yourself until, of course, they betray or cross you. Then blow them away with a submachine gun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I don't see, you know, the 70 times 7 is not how many rounds to use. <laughs> it's how many times to forgive them. This is the new version of the 40 lashes minus one, right? You know? Yeah. <laughs> 40 rounds minus one. <laughs> but, you know, the thing is, this is so sad, because they, they there's no forgiveness. There's there's no forgiveness at all in any part of, of their theology. And that's the central core of Christianity, that God has sent his son to forgive us. And if God has forgiven us, and if God has forgiven those who sin against us, who are we to hold on to that sin? Who are we to say, no, I'm sorry, you're not forgiven? Yeah, but these guys, I mean, they, 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 take, their, they take their stuff from David here. The group first uh, burst into fame in 2006 when several gangsters severed the heads of five rival drug traffickers and rolled them onto a disco dance floor. All right, just like David. And I'll you know, slice that head off, you know. And sh But it's the disco thing that gets me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there was, I don't remember, uh, you know, uh, Goliath and, uh, you know, wearing a sequin jumpsuit or but something. They, yeah, were they playing Staying Alive while they were doing it? You know, Bee Gees in the background? I don't know, but I, I'm glad they found something. Wouldn't some, really be very know, fitting. No, but I'm glad they found some, you know, good use for a disco. You know, I you know, hadn't, hadn't thought of one before that, but it's a kind of a sad thing. It really is. And, uh, you know, sometimes we kind of laugh about some of this stuff that isn't really funny. But at the same time, it's just, how do you, I mean, how do you deal with it? It's so just ridiculously bizarre. Right, absolutely. I, I like this, this interior secretary, Fernando Gomez Mont, and he says, um, you know, um, they are made up of criminal cowards without scruples. They ma try to mask or justify their acts with all sorts of justifications. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and that's true. You know, what we're doing here is righteous. What we're doing here is right. What we're doing here is necessary, and it's not. Yeah, St. Paul said, be angry and don't sin. Right. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. I am angry! Um, I am furious! I am enraged! So. Oh, goodness gracious. Um... Well, we're in Mexico. Let's go. We'll stay in foreign countries here for a while. Uh, let's go to Wisconsin. No, uh, so uh, <laughs> now let's go over to, to England here. Um, 
I'd, I'd read about this in another place before uh, uh, saw it here on Fox News. Um, I'm not sure what to think about this. It's a um, it's a two in one wedding and baptism liturgy. Uh, so, um, and I, I've had to deal with this situation actually. You know, a couple coming, they've been cohabiting. They already have children. Um, you know, one maybe one child, maybe two, and so it's a wedding that concludes with a baptism. Um, and uh, at the end of it, you know, so that you're kind of bringing the whole thing together here. I'm gonna marry that man. Um, which one bishop says it's nutty? <laughs> <laughs> it's nutty, yeah. Um, and it costs two hundred seventy-two pounds. How do they come up with this stuff? Um, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, critics says it appears to sanction having children out of wedlock. You know um, what it, it sanctions to me? It, here's the message that I, that I get from it. And I see this a lot in churches. All right. Um, you got this girl pregnant, and so therefore you're going to have to marry her to make it right. Well... If the marriage isn't going to last, you're not, and you're not really honestly committed to, you know, to making the marriage work. No, that's not going to make it right. That's just well, going to, you know, complicate it even more. I don't think that's. I don't. I didn't get that out of that no, at all. But um, it's a, but it's a similar kind of thing, and and I see this a lot of pastors where they'll say, um, this okay, well, you're living together. And, um, and, and, you know, and I've suggested this, all right, you know, either stop living together until you're married or else, uh, go and, um, you know, go down to just peace, get married and, and then we'll do the ceremony later. We'll, you know, just have a, a simple civil wedding. And then, and I've actually had a couple that, um, that they thought about it and they had kids in the home and, and they said, you know what? We're not setting a good example for our kids. They sat down and talked to the kids and they said, you know what? We, what we've been doing is wrong. We're going to make it right. And, um, and they went down, had a civil wedding. And then, um, later on, they, um, you know, we did. Or I've had them just go that. get the license and I, I've done the wedding myself, just sure. a, a private ceremony. And sure. Uh, but here's what you got to be careful with that though. All right. When you do that, that doesn't make it right. No. You still need it, forgiveness. Right. And I, th 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 I think that's important is that there's a th – th th and, you know, see, I didn't think – you know, this one guy says he thought it was nutty and somebody else said, no, we think, you know, think we're trying to say it's okay. No. I think if you talk to the couple and you can bring about repentance – then I think, you know, as long as you're, you know, you, you, you know, you're not condoning this, condoning the fact that they've lived together, condoning the fact that they've had this child out of what block, it's not God's plan. You know, as long as you just talk to them about, look, I hate to say this to you folks, but you've been sinning by doing this. This is, this is not God's plan. Uh, and if there's repentance, then I see no reason to go through, you know, not to, you know, have the baptism as part of it. Um mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, I thought that was kind of funny. It's Anglo Catholic group Ford and Faith. You know, the proper place for baptism is not during a wedding, but during the Sunday morning act of worship. Um, so the congregation can welcome a new Christian. Well, that's true, but, you know, but, but then I love her second line. It's a shame that what should be a bride's day now stands to be hijacked by screaming kids. It got, it's their own children, you know. Shoot, I've seen weddings hijacked by screaming kids. That's called the wing bearer and the, and the flower girl, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, the guests, for that matter, you know. That's I true, mean, too. At the same time, I'm sorry, I object to them saying this should be the bride's day. Right. I'm, I'm sorry, but too often the wedding's all about the bride. And, well, you know, I, I say, yeah, it's, you know, we should, uh, you know, be respectful and, you know, I know that at our wedding, I, you know, m my wife's just absolutely beautiful, and and you know, yeah, it was all about her. Hey, look at this beautiful woman that's agreed to marry me, you know, and um, but but at the same time, it's you know what? It's not about her. It's not about the husband. 
It's about Christ. Okay. Right. It's about Jesus. It's a worship in this. It, it's a service in the church. Yeah. Uh, and and therefore. About, yeah. It's it's a. This is look what God's love does. You know, look look at the blessings that we receive from God's love. It's all about Him. Right. And that's what I try to focus on in, in every wedding I do, and I, I know you do too. So uh, you know, but yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, I thought that was just you know, it's, it's not a you know a bride's a bride's it's not the bride's day. It's about Jesus. It's about His love. Well, what better way to show His forgiveness and grace than bringing a child into His kingdom yeah. as part of the whole thing? You know, I, I to me, you know, so long as. Yeah, but but again, you know, when you're dealing with the Church of England, it is kind of a state church, and so for some people, it's hatched, matched, dispatched, you know, and um, um, unfortunately, you know, it can just become a ritual, and you know, we're just going to do this, just kind of clean everything up. But I think if you if you think if you you know dealt it carefully and evangelically, and you know, from a, a viewpoint of repentance, I think this could be something very positive for myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do too. As long as it's not, you know. But it's just that whole thing that with any co I mean, I'm sorry, but even if they're even if they're not living together, that doesn't mean that you know that they're not doing anything in between, you know, and and for that matter. And if there's a kid there, they obviously have been. Well, so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it, I mean, the reality is is that any couple that comes before you, you've got a couple of sinners right there, you know. So no matter who they are. And as you go through, um, as you go through premarital counseling, um, there's probably going to be some stuff that comes up where there's going to need to be some confession and, and absolution, forgiveness, you know. And uh, I mean, that's just a great way to start a marriage. Is you know, here's my sins, but um, and now I'm asking, you know, I'm asking you, my fiance, to forgive me. Um, and I'm and I'm asking you to forgive me because God has forgiven me and you know and to go through that it's just you know we've got we as the Christian Church have this we have forgiveness and to offer and and it's such a powerful thing and so often we sort of fall into this um well you know yeah the the sort of hatch match dispatch kind of thing that it's it's it all becomes business no. You know, and, and we just, we forget about, it's it's like, well, make sure the people behave themselves and, you know, and, and then we're all good. You've missed the point entirely. The point is we don't behave ourselves. Right. You know? We turn it into, we turn it on to law. But the law is easier to talk about. You know, you guys straighten up, you know, get your act together, and, you know, things like that. Um, but no, it's, it is all about grace and, uh, you know. Of course, now the couple sitting there going, "Hey, I, I didn't do anything wrong." I don't know what you're complaining about. Yeah, we got to bring the law in to deal. Oh yeah, you know, to bring the point of repentance. But you know, hopefully, you know, in this particular case, and I've had that. You know, I've had couples just kind of look at me and going, "What do you mean we're doing something wrong?" Yeah. You know, uh, but okay. Well, now let's go to that or other foreign country called Wisconsin. <laughs> I'll tell you about beer. <laughs> Wisconsin they use beer and everything. That's right. Made, uh, 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 my dad used to drink Schlitz malt liquor, the beer that made Milwaukee fi famous. <laughs> so, um, anyway. So, in a, ah. um, this is, uh, Wisconsin court said, uh, four to three decision, Religious schools have a constitutional right to hire and fire employees to carry out their missions, and that includes many teachers. Right. Now, this is it says um, it was a age discrimination suit um, filed by a former first grade Catholic school teacher um, who claimed she was, you know, let go in a 2002 downsizing because she was 53. The woman Wendy Oslin had taught at the school since 1974. I figured she started teaching there when she was 18 years old. Wow. Yeah. It, you know, uh, uh, to 2009 minus, you know, 1974 and 53, you know, and, work, you know, worked that back. And, yeah, 18 years old, how old she would have been when she started there. Now, which, I mean, she couldn't even have a, you know, teaching degree yet or anything.
Which, okay. There is what is legal and there is what is right. I think we're in trouble. And I have to say, the court may have said letting her go was legal. And I agree, it probably was. But it was not right. Mm -hmm. I don't see how I, as a pastor, could, you know, stand up and, 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 you know, fire someone who is given, you know, from time she's 18 to 53, you know, what, 30, 35 years of her life to teaching in the school to say, well, you got to go because guess what? I can, I can hire a 22 year old much cheaper than you. Yeah. You know, businesses do that. Churches should not. Businesses shouldn't either, but you know, they're not going to have But we, we are called the higher standards. Yeah. And I mean, the poor, what, what, I mean, what would this do to your faith? You know, I thought the church would treat me better than this. I find your lack of faith disturbing. Yeah, and what kind of message does this send to, um, to you know, to the community? Well, what does this say about the church? What is this, you know, and, and anything the church does <clears throat> reflects on Christ. Right. Yeah, you get up there, you get to the top of the pay scale, you're too expensive, you're going to go. Yeah, and and you know it's so bizarre because you know traditionally, um, the the church has has respected age. I mean, I know that for me as a pastor, the older I get, the better off I am, because I'm respected more. I'm considered, you know, wiser or whatever. Whether that's true or not, you know, it's. I remember starting out um, when I first started out in the ministry at what 22 um man i i just couldn't wait to get older because it was just people kind of look it down and oh you know my grandson's your age and why should i listen to you you know that kind of thing and and uh so you know just respecting that age and the the the, the experience and the wisdom and and all that that comes with age and, you know, I don't know what happened to Jim, but, um, <laughs> I was sitting there wondering, when are you going to grow up? When do you, when are you going to get the age and the wisdom? Hey, I, 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 you know, I'm very, I'm 49, you know, this December, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 18 months from hitting 50. So, you know, it does come. Yeah. No, see, I'm still at that age where, uh, where they go, oh, he's a young pastor. And so maybe that'll, uh, That'll encourage the the younger members to come back that that haven't been around for a while, you know. Which I yeah, don't know mean, if there's anything to that, but you know. <laughs> but look at me, still... he's an old fogey. <laughs> you know, I am, and I'm gonna tell you, you know, middle aged. You know, I'll be hitting grandpa years here, and too much, not too much for, too much in the in the future. Yeah, not too much with an engaged son. Could be right around the corner. It could be, could be another five years. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, you know, uh, uh, um, you know, I, I, I kind of, you know, I kind of had a, you know, this this lawyer for the church says, uh, um, or no, this is the um, Supreme Court justice, you know. Uh, it's obvious that Austin's role was of high importance and closely linked to the mission of the school, the inculcation of a Christ-centered concept of life. She was an important instrument in a faith-based organization's efforts to pass its faith to the next generation. He gets it. But he the gets it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, but but this is you know defending the church's right to fire her. That's the funny part. <laughs> Because, you know, hers was essentially ministerial in nature, and it really did deal with this, this biblical faith, edu faith based education. And, and, you know, all this is, you know, the, the, the wonderful stuff. You're fired. <laughs> I wonder if Shaylee's got the gold. Didn't even get the gold watch. But maybe got a gold rosary if she was lucky. I don't know. Bye bye, boys. Have fun storming the castle. It's too bad.
So, yeah, you know, churches, and especially churches that have schools, whether it be a day school or elementary school or, or I mean, a, a preschool or whatever, you know. I mean, yeah, now is tough. I just came from an education meeting, and, um, you know, it's it's tough. You, it's, it's tough to make ends meet and, and make sure that your teachers are compensated properly and, you know, all that, especially, um, you know, a lot of places enrollments down just because of um of the the recession people are um right. they're they're not sending you know for preschool the they're not sending their kids to three year old preschool always to um you know and stuff like that that they're waiting till they're four and so you know that that hurts when you're expecting to have um more three year olds in your preschool or whatever. And and I imagine that uh, private elementary schools and stuff are, are facing the same thing. We uh, we did have to actually you know lay off one of our teachers last year. We just didn't have the student population to afford her. And um, you know there was between um, uh, two of them, but you know financially it was not a the question. Um, it, one one had more education than the other did. Oh, the one had been there longer, and uh, you know, but it was not a, a pleasant decision, you know, for us to make, and we put it off as long as humanly possible. But you know, we just came to the conclusion: look, we we're, and we talked to both of them, and you know, said, look, this is this is where we are, and you know, but it, it's a very painful thing to have to do sometimes. Um, but in this case, you know, um, you know. Unless they uh, completely eliminated the first grade teaching position, if right. you've been there, you know that many more years, and you have just as much education, you get the experience. You know, I can't understand why you would, you know, and I don't know. I don't know if she's got, you know, maybe the other person had a master's degree or something. Yeah, that would I mean add value. That I don't know about, but otherwise, I, I really have a, a problem with somebody who's given thirty five years, and in our case, the woman had another job. Um, and you know that they kept asking, kept she's a visiting nurse, and so they kept saying, "Can we give you more hours? Can we give you more hours?" And so she could just call them and say, "Yeah, I can take more hours now." So it wasn't uh, you know like her her only source of income or anything. Mm -hmm. But here, being a full time teacher, this was for this woman's only source of income. Yeah. So now you know, and that's not to say that this wasn't a difficult decision for the um for the school. I'm sure that they weren't happy about doing it um boy at the same time it it just boy it it's just kind of kind of stinks right well, just the fact that the way they argue it, you know they didn't say well, the other teachers had more education you know that they, they they you know they just you know kind of base it strictly on a these laws don't apply to us because we're a religious organization. That makes me a little bit more suspicious. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And uh, and I, I like I said, I really feel for this poor woman. Um, I can just imagine what this did to her did to her faith. You know, having taught and and probably um, you know this this one her, her lawyer, probably, you know, talks about how um, um, uh, what was it? Uh, you know how little she earned, you know, that they, uh, um, there it is, um, you know, they already pay le earn, uh, earn less pay and benefits than their public school counterparts. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a reality. Uh, so, you know, yeah, so here she, well, actually, I had a friend of mine teaching in an evangelical school, high, uh, grade school, and uh, she had to quit and get a job with the local public school system because she wasn't getting paid enough to pay off her student loans. You know, she, you know she's, you know, working, you know, teaching second grade full time. And, um, but they were paying her so little that she couldn't uh, pay, pay student loans. And, you know, she had to still live at home and parents were helping her out to pay, make her student loan payments and stuff. So, I mean, the, it was just so little that she just she had to go get something where she can actually get some money, uh, but most of the teachers there are, um, are 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 married women whose husbands you know are really the main breadwinner, and don't need to worry too much about how much they get paid. Them they're able to kind of devote themselves. So 
here's this woman here devoting herself for 35. I just can't get over that. Just cannot get over that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> well, yeah, there's there's Dale's law. Don't do that. <laughs> so, go out and have a beer instead. Make you much happier. So, speaking of, that's our last story for tonight. Speaking of don't do that, um, we got some feedback on uh, YouTube that I thought was uh, worth mentioning. Um a little more uh, in, uh, intelligent than the typical feedback we get on YouTube. Um, and not just a little either. Um, I didn't mean to put it that way. Um, I was referring to our last episode. And um, and we use the term homosexuals, all right? And it says, The term homosexuals is often used as a tool to dehumanize that vast, diverse group of people. It's the same thing that serial killers do with their victims so as to remove the emotional connection that keeps them from wanting to harm in the first place. Just call us gay people, because we are people after all. A lot of us are very spiritual and religious and want nothing more than the love of God equal to the passion of anyone else. Um, wow. Um, you know, if I say... Okay, for, well, first of all, um, I, thanks for the comment. And I appreciate it. It really wasn't intended. I'm, you know, I'm always trying to figure out what word to use. Right. I mean, I mean, we would would not be our. Um, it's not our intention in any way to uh, dehumanize any group of people. No. We are all created in God's image. Um, you know that is. And Jesus you know, died for all of us. And Jesus died for all of us. Uh, uh, his death is, is there for each person. Um, and, you know, we'll, uh, um, you know, C.S. Lewis say we were all sons of Adam and daughters of Eve, which, what's he say, is the greatest thing you could say, but also the worst thing you can say, uh, you know, at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we're not about to dehumanize anyone. Uh, we don't, that's not what we're all about, no matter who you are or what you've done. Um gay or straight or anything else, you are um, created in the image, you created with the image of God. Um, and some people say, no, we lost that image. No, we didn't. Genesis 9 uh, says, don't kill because they created with the image of God. And in the New Testament, James says, don't curse other people for they have been made in the image of God. So um, that's, uh, I think that's a very, very important in, in for us to always hold in, in our honor to, of one another. Having said that, uh, all the term homosexual simply means is a person who loves the same. Yeah. You know, heterosexual, hetero means the other. Uh, homo, homo means the same. It's in homogenous. Um, and, uh, you know, so it's just simply people who have an attraction for the same sex. And um, that's all we mean by the term. Yeah. Uh, you know, if, if I say American... And not an American person. I'm not intending to suggest that that person, or that you know, that that's somehow not a person. Um, if I say Jim's a pastor and don't say he's a clergyman um, or clergy person, clergy person for that that term, never been a clergy yet. term. Yeah. So I, you know, um, I, here's the problem. These sort of what's the, the appropriate term or what's the acceptable term tends to change. I mean, look at, all right, you had, um, uh, is it, what's, what's the appropriate term? Black or African American? Um, or, you know, I mean, there's, there's been any number of, of different terms and some of them are, you know, or even, you know, okay, colored is not really considered acceptable now but then at the same time um i hear the you have the national uh, association for the advancement of colored people they haven't changed their name they're still using the term and and so um you know i i hear different terms being used back and forth and you know i think it's really more how the term's being used than what actual term you're using. Obviously, there's exceptions. There's certain terms you just plain don't use. Um, but I'm I'm wondering. I've I mean I've got a lot of friends who are 
homosexuals and I've never, or gay people, whatever term you want to use. And I, none of them have ever said, Hey, don't use that term. Um, and so I, I don't know, maybe it's a regional thing or maybe it's, you know, it's a sort of, it, this is what's popular right now or, or whatever. But I mean, it's certainly not our intent to, you know, to dehumanize right. anyone. Uh, and so. we, you know, um, we think we'll, we'll try to be more sensitive just since you asked us to here. Uh, our friend, I can't promise we always will be because, but if we do, just remember that we're not intending to dehumanize. It's far as the farthest thing from our minds. Yep. So, um, well, but if you got a night. comment like that one and you're on YouTube, you can give us the comment or you can send it to podcast at crossfeednews.com. Yep. And um, that would be fine. Or, you know, anywhere else that, that you're watching this, whether it's YouTube or, uh, or even uh, the Cleveland Fox 8 channel <laughs> where I started uploading these. Um, I had a few people watching it on there. And uh, and you can also, by the way, feel free to um, go to our website. You can comment there, uh, crossfeednews.com. Where's the other place you can uh, give us a comment here, too? Uh, or you can follow us on Facebook, by the way. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, we do have CrossFeed News uh, on Facebook, and actually Dale and I are both also on Facebook as well. Or you can even follow Dale on Twitter, so you get the little tweets of, I've gotten up this morning, I'm brushing my teeth. <laughs> well, no, if you're following me on Twitter lately, it's been, I've been fighting a raccoon that's <laughs> getting into our garbage. <laughs> but I've been making other comments, too. So, um, some interesting, you know, once in a while I'll see something happen um, that... Uh, Oh, I made a comment the other day um, that I, I went and visited somebody that had visited our church. And, uh, you know, they signed the little book in the pew and um, wrote their address. So I stopped by the house and said, hey, how you doing? Anything we can do for you? And she was absolutely shocked that somebody came by. And I said, you know, I was glad that she was pleasantly surprised to see me, but she shouldn't have been surprised. You know, churches, if somebody's comes and visit you and write down their address in the book, go visit them. Go tell them God loves them. You know, go thank them for coming. You know, if you can, and I didn't do this, but if you can, take them a plate of cookies or something, you know, or, or, or do do something to, to say, hey, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All the audio listening people are going, what, what? Jim just held up a beer. <laughs> Yeah, it worked so, at the White House. It can work for your evangelism too. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. So, but uh, yeah, you know, you've got an opportunity to love somebody. You know, so go do it. And uh, if they leave their phone number, give them a call. If, you know, whatever. But make sure that they know that they're loved, because a lot of people go through life just sort of slipping in and out. And they feel like nobody ever notices them. Nobody knows they're there. And really what they want more than anything is just for somebody to notice them and, and to let them know they're loved. And that's our job as a church. So go do it. Go do it. Hey, everybody, thank you for tuning in and listening to us ramble and talk and everything. It really is good to be back. God bless you all. Yep. Good night, everybody. God bless you.